In this thread, we compare our experiences, find more commonalities, and dig up some new info. At the very least, I hope it awakens some memories for those of you who haven't looked into it yet. Get experience. Be advanced reader. Take into special class with kids you mostly don't recognize. Ran by a familiar teacher and external instructor. Windows covered with paper, black and yellow. Given pink and a seed drink. Lessons about ancient Egypt. Thought exercises about hypothetical societies. Resource management. What should X do in what scenario? Being asked to guess what card is in the instructor's hand. Being asked how you knew. Weirdly intense for something so mundane. Being in a dark booth, tight headphones, frequencies being played in your ears. Instructor asks you questions. Computer time. Flash slash animation software that was ahead of its time. Sitting in a circle, being asked to visualize spaces as a group. Plastic counters, fitting shapes together in the correct way. Suddenly taken out of the class. Teacher seems angry at you. Nobody explains why. Parents seem oblivious to these classes. Your memories are vague, though you spend hours in them. Astral travel before gate, but not after. Long needle in the base of your spine. Scar still present. Classroom probably became the IT room. Teacher probably went on to be the IT instructor. Secondary class outside the school. Like a trailer made into a classroom. Reading some of these actually had me tweaking. Not the generic ones that apply to me, that probably apply to almost everyone, like firstborn son, birth complications, speech therapy, etc. But the specific stuff about GATE is kind of crazy. I personally was in GATE on an Air Force base in North Dakota as a young child. They had the rooms taped off with yellow and pink paper. We learned about Egypt for some reason, and I distinctly remember the strange hearing tests. We had them like multiple times a year, which in hindsight is nonsensical. I remember being in a small line, not my normal class size, and being taken into a small black booth with huge ass headphones being placed over my head and being asked which ear I heard the beeping in. They would ask me stuff like, are you sure you heard it? And would nudge me in one way or the other for some reason. This memory may be inaccurate since it was so long ago, but for some of the hearing tests, Instead of being in the booth with the large headphones, I was in front of a large machine. The headphones were much smaller, and didn't even really look like headphones at all. They were a thin metal band with rubber ends that they would put on my ear. Did not experience any particularly strange things, like a needle being stuck in me, or drinking some pink drink. I remember a surprising amount about myself at that age, but remember very little about my time and gait. Other than being taught about Egypt, as well as algebra, maybe. I can't really recall a single lesson, or an actual real memory of a class being held. The closest thing I can remember is my teacher in gate hyping up some huge big paper we all had to write and gaslighting us about how we're not doing enough and how important it is, and then completely dropping it out of nowhere, saying it was cancelled and never mentioning it again. Recently, a nun was saying that the tests had to do with scopolamine, a drug that causes memory loss. Some people seem to be more resistant to it than others. I remember it first starting to pop up around the time Project Monarch Frets and Info did, which you don't see as much of, which was like 2014-ish. But yeah, nothing new is injected into the skate freeway. Basically a dead end at this point. It was called TAG when I was in this from 1999 to 2001, and I can't remember a single thing we did. I have vague memories of sitting in this room with a long table with a bunch of computers on it, and I want to say I remember the typical pink drink and thinking it looked and smelled like Pepto. I just can't remember what we did at any of these tag meetings, and it was weird that we had a room with that many computers in it when there were no classes involving computers until middle school, where I lived in Tennessee at the time. Did anyone else not drink the pink goop because of a specific allergy? I remember watching other kids drinking it, and I felt left out. Did Gate actually do anything with any of you? I remember going to a special classroom until middle school, and then we had a designated room for gifted in high school, but it wasn't to do anything in. There weren't any programs available, and they did not assist me in any way. 
I'm in fact not even sure why I was considered gifted in high school if there wasn't a real program to go along with it. Unlike the lower grades, where we researched and created projects about whatever topics, I feel pretty alienated from other gate kids in this aspect. Also, I can't stress enough that the stupid bullshit list you all have in the OP is what makes this sound so much like a self-imposed idea of importance larped out with a paranormal twist. Did you not have girls in your gifted groups? Gate from me was an entirely different school. It had two big classrooms with bathrooms in between and like some back rooms on one side. The kids were not taught anything. They just did activities and testing. I only went sometimes because one of my friends was forced to go there and it messed him up bad. They wanted to fly me out to an underground base when I was a kid and my mom almost let them. But I looked into the future and told her how messed up it was and that she was awful for even considering it. Does anyone else remember a bunch of kids killing another kid and all the adults and police covering it up? I vaguely remember something like this and how the kid's mom was so upset and everyone just acted like it was normal and too bad. Yeah, the 90% is just inflated ego that can go at the door as far as I'm concerned. However, it was weird that we took the pink liquid, the blue and yellow cards with shapes on them, the hearing tests, etc., along with being removed from regular classes at frequent intervals. All of this could definitely be explained easily by anyone who was an actual gate teacher, and with how long these threads have been up, I'm surprised no one has come in to set the record straight. Do we know who the teachers were at this point? Is there any way to know? I wouldn't think so. Story for another time, but this stuff is real. Another concept I'm going to mention, which I've never seen mentioned. Do you guys know about the mysterious stranger perk from Fallout? I've had someone like that appear in a couple of scenarios, some as an adult and some as a kid. Met him when I was nine years old, and he said he knew everything about me, like as if he was a private investigator, but was otherwise very kind and had dad-like energy. Never saw him again until recently. Different person, but same energy. Wearing a perfectly fit, tailored suit that looks like it was made from the 50s. Mobster hat, etc. The whole thing. He is connected to the gate program. I've always held that I was a gate candidate, or went at some point, and barely remember it. My mom would always mention that they want me to take you to a different school to do a test because your grades and scores are so good, and that much of the other gifted kids would be there too. This stands out from when she would tell me that she was going to send me to a private school for a better education a lot of times, because in this case, it was specifically about a test at a remote location, and all my gifted friends would be there. I was around 8 or 9. I also had a weird experience that I remember really clearly, where I would be taken in during recess to a small office in the school to play board games while answering questions about my life to three supposed staff members, all female, who I had never seen before. Other than this, I have most of the characteristics. Born choking on my umbilical cord and or not breathing. No crying, born late, I think. Or before, one or the other. I was 12 pounds. High IQ, Asperger's, no drug experimentation, but strongly desired it. Interested in paranormal as long as I can remember. Prophetic dreams. Predicted the deaths of classmates on three separate occasions. Occipital bone. Forehead scar. He's alive. Tall. And a freckle pattern on my arm that resembles thick related. Why is one of my earliest memories being in a classroom and a teacher rolling in the TV to show us all that 9-11 just happened? So weird, man. I remember where the place is and everything. You can usually find teachers belated on the school they were in. It's so weird. I don't remember the women teachers names, but they were assholes sometimes. They rent a few of them out of Montessori schools in mass. Could start looking there. They were most likely contracted through a private sector organization set up for gifted education, which keeps them off of government ledgers. Yeah. I've tried to find the school I went to on a few occasions. It was a small building in the back of a parking lot behind a shopping center, nearly in the woods. It was so creepy. I've had no luck finding it, 
but the modern eyes of Montessori schools give me the creeps. My son went to a Montessori school briefly. It was filled with SSRI riddled white milks and a token female Nambian doctor who just wanted the best for our little Braylon and feel that this provides so much enrichment. The teacher was a kooky Miss Frizzle lookalike. The kids were all feral assholes and the curriculum was a load of crap. Pulled him out after a year. Well, mostly because once you start to dig in, they released the Zerat Zung Quintel Pro Glowies. I wonder which tactic they'll use for this threat. But basically, it boils down to MK Ultra, Monarch, and its offshoot specifically. There were three kids in my school and gate. One did the next year's math, and never did a lot of reading, and reading comprehension tests. I just took tests non-stop. One of them was a late 80s computer game, where you had to navigate a sub through hundreds of increasingly complex puzzle levels that would frequently introduce new mechanics with no explanation. The game had an overabundance of teal and purple, so the Ed line in OP's text about computer games ahead of their time resonated with me. Do you personally take any contention or have any personal contextual relevance in any of OP's potential additions to the 10 year old gatherings list? To clarify, a typical gate class was usually three or more hours. For the first hour or two, there were always shared tests or activities, with the last portion a sort of choose your own adventure time. I did not get to pick that, just more tests. Thinking back on it now, one of the shared excessive that we'd frequently do was hour plus, eyes closed, lights off, guided meditation on sofas instead of desks. For these, we'd use the same room, but all the equipment would be changed out for the sofas, and they would always bring in a different, out of school suit check to conduct the visualization guidance. This one stands out as odder than the likes of the card finky guessy games, or the what would you do if you were in charge of a nation invaded after a major earthquake type simulations. P.S. Why did they always have us draw hyperspace guide maps with no center after the visualization exercises? Since I'm reminiscing, this got me thinking back on the card testing too. It gets mentioned a lot in these threads, but it's almost never discussed outside of checklists. Instead, I'll describe how we did the test. The three of us did the first one when we were between 9 and 11 years old. We were sat at a miniaturized round table with three equally small chairs. The worked well at first, but the school never got a bigger table. It was cumbersome in the later years. We'd sit around the table equally spaced, and behind each of us was a suit standing with a clipboard. This is a small rural town. Other teachers wore tea and blue jeans tear. A golf shirt was fancy. We'd have a deck of 50 or so of the same few cards. One person would get the deck and draw a card. They were told to stare intently at the card for 10 seconds and attempt to visualize in their mind what they saw as they saw it. After this, they would put the card face down in another pile. The other two students were told to focus on the card drawer's forehead visually while working through what is essentially a mindless meditation exercise we had done previously, then to declare, one student per card, what the drawer was visualizing. Each of the three of us would take a turn as the visualizer for the entire deck of cards, then rotate to a guesser, and we would do six rounds of the deck. Now with hindsight, the first time I ever did this test, I did exactly as instructed. I would focus on the center of the forehead of the visualizer without thought, and as it likes to do when ensconced in the moment, my visual snow shifted from static to waves, coalescing from the periphery of my vision into a geometrical shape just around the exterior of the center. The shape occurred every time the visualizer was visualizing, even when it wasn't my turn at a statement, and I declared it so when asked. However, the results were never shared, and every test after I looked them in the eye and picked at random. I think the question of why is implied or not. That being said, I am very interested in how these commonalities occur and why. Forehead scars. From what I've read, everyone gets their forehead scars a different way, usually a self-inflicted accident. What is the esoteric significance of a visible forehead scar, and why is it so common? Near-death experience. Why drowning? And why do so many strong swimmers report them? In all my time reading these threads, 
I always hear. I don't know what happened. Never had a problem before. It happened so suddenly. Feels like a lot of these NDEs almost need to happen. That's how mine felt too. Interest in macro scale perspective. Why is it that almost all gators have this urge to see and understand the world from this top down perspective? It's natural to have this curiosity as a child, but so many of us are fixated on that perspective as adults. Why are the police so lenient? Is something written on the profiles of every single gate student on the pulse system? It seems unlikely, but still, anybody close to a cop. Physical similarities are one thing, but having such similar life experiences far away and years on from gate is so, so goddamn spooky to me. I'm not sure if I was part of this, but I do remember some weird stuff that happened to me back in second grade, 1997, Brit Elementary School in Georgia. I was randomly taken out of class one day to one of those temporary classrooms, those outdoor trailer ones, for some strange testing. I remember being very embarrassed initially because everyone at school used to refer to those temp classrooms as the moron class, and I did not want to be a part of that law. I remember there being like three or four of her kids that I had never seen, just waiting inside, and there was an older lady that did the testing. I remember being truly baffled about how nonsensical the tests were, like laying down cards with shapes, asking which one I choose, and then having to fully justify why I chose that particular card. There was no real setup to the questions, like you'd expect in some IQ testing. It just felt like I was being messed with law. I remember headphones, but I don't remember if it was a standard hearing test or not. I definitely remember the tones in gaslighting questions. Are you sure it was that ear? Why do you believe that? Etc. It was just a really bizarre and uncomfortable experience overall, and I always wondered why I had to do all of that stuff. I was too embarrassed to ever talk about it with my friends when I got back to class, but after reading about the stuff, I feel like there was something more to the nonsense. Have strong visual snow as a child. Could close my eyes and feel like I was traveling through warp tunnels and visit distant lands. Ask Miss Carmichael when we were going to study this stuff. Eh, we don't really teach that stuff anon. Start gate not long after. The card game, weird drink, hearing tests, in it for a couple of months until my relationship with the teacher breaks down. Not sure what I did wrong. Assaulted in a trailer at the end of it all. All I have to remember the whole thing was my bloody underwear and a foldable alien spoon they gave me as a reward object. After, cannot access the warp tunnel at all. Still have visual snow, but it fades into the background over the years. A decade later, experience a spiritual awakening. Visual snow comes back full force training myself to navigate the warp tunnels again. That's my experience. All of the gate stuff rings very true to me, although my memories aren't exactly clear. Here's a weird one. Wonder how many others this has happened to. When I was very young, I was kidnapped by a couple. By kidnapped, I mean, they told me to get into the truck, and despite everything I've ever been told about not doing that, I did it anyways. They did not do anything except talk to me and drive me around town. Then they dropped me back off and I never saw them again. Black truck. Very strange. Okay, we share some patterns. Remember lots and lots of ghosts as a young boy. Imagined and thought about a guardian angel protecting me. Even listened to music and interpreted the music as being about this protection by my angel from evil. Also kind of kicked out of gate because by grades, High school tried to restart some gate program with me and other kids. Had a meeting and never heard about it again. Barely graduated. Straight D's and C's basically. Teachers talked about me a lot. This one really struck me. People also thought I was high a lot in high school. I had never done a single drug till I was 18. And yet I had this reputation. Heavy daydreamer. Distracted. You say you suffocated. Like OP. OP. I almost drowned. Well, almost to me. Maybe I'm being dramatic. Also like Ope and these other unknowns, I also had a tunnel I could travel for by pressing on my eyes and managed to get to the end a few times. It was like a green pool with shapes inside it, moving like a clock. You say you were assaulted 
and given a foldable alien spoon. Could you please elaborate? Be me. School trip. Older friend. Has scissor necklace. I know, but that's how I remember it. He takes it off and says, It's actually a spaceship, a sign of my people. We are aliens. Shows me how the scissors sort of bend and fold into a different shape. I freak the hell out and cry and run. Feel bad later from my reaction, but I never saw him again. Was it anything like that? Also, so sorry you were assaulted. The alien spoon was like something you get in a cereal box. It was like a flat plastic alien character from some cartoon that you could unfold laterally to become a spoon. Sorry if I was unclear earlier. Does anybody recognize the cartoon now? I've been trying to find an image of it, but can't for the life of me. Show is about free alien brothers, late 90s, early 2000s. Grayish aliens with purple temples. Blue spacesuit, I think. All cool tones. The leader. Obviously the older and more menacing looking one. A tall skinny one. Cowardly personality. The short small dumb one that often has a solution. I can't find the cartoon or the spoon anywhere online, but I remember it so clearly. I want to say the show that you're talking about was The Brothers Flub from late 90s Nickelodeon, but I don't think there was ever any merch for it. Though, I remember getting color changing spoons and lightsaber spoons in cereal boxes, so I looked into cereal boxes that had falling cereal spoons and I could not find any before 2011, but there were some Monsters Inc. ones that kind of fit what you're saying. Personally, I think it was experimentation on high-perception children. I don't have any memory issues regarding gate that I am aware of. I questioned the headphone test because it was actually a plurality of different tests done in different circumstances. And during the very last headphones test that lasted many hours where I had to perform all manner of other cognitive tests that were repeats from previous gate sessions, I wasn't even asked about the tones. Here is one. One of the concepts introduced to us early on was the notion of Plato's cave. Whenever I see this brought up in more modern terms, it's always about information informed upon one by external agents. But in the gate version, it was presented as a thing of the senses. Your eyes don't say. They form an analog that is presented to a discrete observer, like a man in a submarine looking at a radar screen. Do you think this holds true? I no longer do. I remember being in this program and most of these points in the OP. I'll add, we learned about ancient Mesopotamia. We were tasked with creating an invention and parenting it before presenting it on stage in front of patent people and the school. I invented a dog outfit that was breathable, which would use static to collect dog hair. Wasn't great. Some kid invented a spinning spaghetti fork, which actually recently became a thing in the last 10 years. We also did tons of lateral thinking puzzles, I also remember watching a video about subliminal messaging which was loaded with subliminal messages and we'd have to spot them. I am fairly certain the program was either some form of grooming slash recruitment program or an MK Ultra type program. I shared this in the last big gate thread. The class was an entry level exam. If you stayed in it at your time and gate, you did not pass and your sole purpose was to be cover for the one or two kids who did, who were removed from your class early and taken to an entirely different location. The various liquids they made us drink were to interfere with memory recording, and they were specifically looking for kids immune to it. As I have said before, if you were not taken to a second location away from the other kids and put through numerous games testing precognition where the consequences for losing were electric shock, you were not really a gate kid. The final test was administered completely telepathically and was observed by someone from the US military. I've shared all of this before. Mine was in Roswell, New Mexico at Berendo Elementary and the second location after they removed me from the class and took me to the physical tests with electrocution was the New Mexico Military Institute. I wasn't in the program, but I remember being invited and my mother accepting. Then my father finding out and blowing up and demanding that I be removed, and he told her that if she ever consented to something like that again without talking to him first, he'd put his foot so far up her ass the water on his knee would quench her first. 
He was a former federal government employee who went into the private sector in the 80s after becoming disillusioned by something he would not ever talk about, and whatever it was, he took it to his grave. After seeing this spread for the first time, maybe there was something legitimately suspicious about the program, considering how much my father freaked out. That's not the messed up part though. I grew up having tests run on me by my father privately, from the ages of about 3 or 4 to 20. Memory, cognitive, problem solving, you name it. My childhood sucked because I never knew what was a test and what was real. Messed up my relationship with my father real bad, never could get close to him. My clearest memories of him were him just constantly plying me with information and data. He wanted me to be a repository of information. It did make me a pretty good trivia game competitor, so much so that nobody will play with me anymore, Gek. Or any games for that matter, because I always figure out how to win. I've spent my whole life trying to blend into normal society and not draw too much scrutiny, as I was always afraid that I'd get vanned or something like that. That was my 20s and 30s. My mind would run so fast and hard I couldn't sleep more than a couple hours per night. Weed is the only thing that slows it all down and makes me be able to live in the moment and experience just what is around me without constantly cross-referencing every single thing I hear, see, and even smell. I was given no help ever and was only beaten into submission and compliance. The only thing that brings me peace now is locking myself in my room with rain sounds. My father was described as likely to be psychic by an enemy general after he had sent several operations with him as the specific target in Vietnam. One of my areas of interest is soldiers returning from Vietnam with an untreatable form of Plasmodium falciparum. Not that your father is one of these, but a number of soldiers returned addicted to heroin and due to sharing needles, they'd spread it to over 100,000 people by 1975 and that's what I think swine flu 1976 was, and possibly HIV. DARPA's name for what they did to the troops was Mycoplasma Incognitos, and they gave people doxycycline for it, which did little more than tamp it down. I think that's what's in the cups, is either Toxoplasmosis, or some attempt to treat Toxoplasmosis, or Falciparum for descendants of veterans. Whatever it's about, yeah, it does confer a sort of psychic trait, whether real or artificial, and DARPA has been trying to use it for troop telemetry for decades. Wasn't long before everyone's infected with it, and geeks from WEF are now bragging they can spy on you and read your ATM pin. I am confirmed IgG plus for toxoplasmosis, and recently, I have been cross-posting about boofing doxycycline, which is active against the aceoplasts for both P. falciparum and toxoplasmosis. I don't believe it works effectively when taken orally due to mucoid encapsulation in the small intestine. Boofing it pits the drug in your intestinal wall, which is then active on the toxoplasmosis and or falciparum colonized under the plaque. It can reach the pathogens and bacteria that are encapsulated under the plaque. I ejected all the mucoid over the course of two days, and my so-called targeting voices diminished. On the third day, I lost a large, blood-filled worm with a huge protein mass attached to it, which had probably also been encapsulated under the mucus. Whatever they did to mess with this in soldiers in Vietnam, I have no doubt they did to children. K-12 war criminals. As a side note, for legal reasons, please do not boof anything. No matter what you think might be inside your body, please, please no. 